Good morning, afternoon, and evening to all my YouTube family and friends. Thank you for joining me this gloomy day here in Indiana. It's been raining, so yeah, I'm doing a lot of cooking today. I'm doing the mashed potatoes, green beans. I got a video getting ready to be posted on doing green beans out of again. So you need to check that one out. But today we are doing cube steak smothered in gravy. And boy, is that all so good and simple to make. So, if you haven't already done so, please, if you're viewing my YouTube channel, it only takes just a second to click that thumbs up button. It doesn't cost a thing to do that but that is what helps my channel grow I'm just saying if you're viewing click that thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so so I'm going to move you over here to the stove and show you how I do my cube steak and gravy Move down here. Hopefully you can see that. Not sure. Okay, so start out with I got my pan. I gotta turn these green beans down. I'm just using vegetable oil. Oh, um, just maybe a quarter of an inch in the frying pan. I've got four cube steaks here, pretty big size one. I have rinsed them off. I always rinse my meat. I am going to salt both sides. I'm going to pepper. Nothing fancy on this. I'm going to put some garlic pepper. Just like that. Press that in there. Throw it in the flour. Let's do this again. I don't know. It's, it, it, uh, that's why I always rinse my meat. There's just something that, seeing that red in a plate just really bothers me. Salt, pepper real good. When that oil is hot, you will put this in the frying pan. You will fry these. That one's pretty much falling apart. You will fry these for I would say about three, four minutes per side. Now you don't want these to cook all the way because we're gonna put these in gravy, just like that. Good and hot. These are uh, cube steaks, they're also good can really get them thick enough and bound them out yourself. You can make fried, deep fried tenderloin sandwich. That's how we used to do it when I had the restaurant. And boy, was they good. Or the pork tenderloin and the mouth. My poor old skillet here, it's about seen its days. That one's just about fell apart. We'll see what we can do, see if we can't fix it with this flour. I think whoever pounded this meat out, pounded this one way too thin. 
But it's gonna be all right. Get all together. Go ahead and put that in there too. And I know a lot of you, I know a friend of mine always did this in the crock pot, but I like to do it on the stove. If I'm here, I can watch it. I'm gonna go ahead and put them little things in there because that'll be good for the gravy. Just like that. Let me get my dish out of the way. I need to wash my hands. tell you just as soon as I I don't know if you all have this problem but as soon as I seems like I get my hands all cleared up from bruises I get another bruise and don't even know how I'm doing it but I bruise very easy I was out messing around in my flowers yesterday But while this is cooking, about four minutes on each side, like I said, you do not want to overcook these. I've already got a, a real small onion cut up. This is going to go here in just a few minutes after this gets done. So I will get back with you just as soon as these are ready to turn. Okay, these are ready to be turned over. Now that's just about what they look like. Like I said, they're not really, really brown. Just put them bad boys over. Wish y'all could smell this. That one, after I pressed it together with that flour, it held pretty good. Now we're just going to let them fry here for a few minutes. Be right back. Okay, these are ready to be taken out. They're not completely done. You can still see a little blood, a little pink coming up out of the, the meat. But that's what you want. Go ahead and transfer these to a dish. over here just like that and all that dripping that's in that skillet you want to keep I'm going to write the bottom of this now I think there's enough oil in this skillet for the gravy. I'll know when I get the flour in there. Now we're going to take and put these onions, we're going to break them up. Turn this down a little bit. Just like that. This one out sear these for a little while. Get that good flavor in there. And while I'm doing this, someone requested, one of my subscribers, 
I'm going to give her a shout out right now that she requested that I do a butterscotch poppy seed cake. Sharon, if you watch this video, maybe you have a recipe for it. Because I have looked in my cookbooks. Man, I've got all kinds of cookbooks up here. I have looked on YouTube for butterscotch poppy seed cake. I don't find any. All I find is the lemon poppy seed. So, I went to Google and I found a few on there, but they're only like a semi uh, butterscotch poppy seed cake. It's all done with a cake mix and uh, butterscotch pudding, so if it comes down to it, that's what I'm going to make. So if anybody out there has a recipe for a butterscotch cake, poppy seed, hey, email me the recipe. If not, I'm just going to have to do one that's uh, semi-homemade. And that's okay. Everybody wants something quick and easy. Okay, so these onions have been in there long enough. So I'm going to take them up. I'm going to scoop these up. Don't want them to get real brown. They're, they're going to continue to tenderize in the gravy. Hope y'all are having a wonderful day today. Nothing gets any better than this, except for a homegrown big ripe tomato. Okay, so now I'm gonna I'm gonna turn the fire up. Now I'm gonna add some flour. I may have to add some more oil to this because I want a lot of gravy. Yeah, I'm gonna have to add some more. Let me open this up. I like a lot of gravy because we use the gravy as well go over our mashed potatoes which I have mashed potatoes or potatoes boiling here keep breaking the bottom of that pan oh yeah this has been the best skillet but I've had this for years, so it's about seen its days. I'll put this on my Christmas list for some uh, family member get me a good skillet for Christmas. Maybe a little bit deeper one. I am going to check my green beans here. Oh yeah. Come along just fine. Now you want this to get brown. Keep stirring. You don't want this to stick. Because if you don't, Cook this flour, then you're going to have gravy that tastes like flour. So you don't want raw flour taste. 
and the longer you cook this, the browner your gravy will be. When this is ready, we will put in some beef broth. Then we will add the meat and we will let this simmer, the meat, roughly for about 45 minutes. And that meat will be so tender, you'll cut it with a fork. Went to the store earlier to try to find that poppy seed. I couldn't find it. And it's a banana pudding mix. Couldn't find it. Of course, that's up my local dollar store here in town. As you can see, that's getting pretty good color there. And this is how I make my liver and onions as well. I love liver and onions. I'm going to have to do a video on that. I know a lot of people don't like liver, but boy, it is good when it's cooked like this. Okay, so we are ready to add beef broth. And this is, and maybe a half a cup taken out of it. We'll see if this is enough. If not, we'll add some milk or some water to this. If you don't make a mess in your kitchen, let me tell you, you're not a, you're not a cook. Okay, now the fun part is to continue to stir this. Now if you like dark, dark gravy, you can add some browning, like kitchen bouquet to it, but this is just fine for me and it's got a great flavor. Do not add any more salt at this point because the beef broth has a lot of salt in it. And just keep stirring that so it doesn't get lumpy and there's no lumps in it. All that good dripping. Look at that. Oh yeah. It's a thickening up. I still have my burner on high. If you're watching this video, please, please give me a thumbs up. It doesn't cost anything if you're viewing. You might as well give me a thumbs up. Now, I don't know. I always watch on my phone. Um, YouTube. So I don't know if they have a thumbs up if you're watching on TV. Okay, so now this is getting a little thick. Thicker than what I want. I'm going to add a little bit of water. Gonna make some more gravy. <clears throat> so I don't know if you're watching my channel on your television set, if it has a way for you to give me a thumbs up. It may not, I don't know. I do know it has a subscribe button. But 
YouTube goes on the thumbs up and how long you view the video. They like it to be past 30 seconds. So in your comments, just tell me how you make yours. You have any suggestions for me? Also, I'd like to thank all of you that's watching the video of my lady friend, Wilma, that's 96. She'll be 97 August the 2nd. She's a little sweetheart. I hope I live that long. But, uh, if you could take the, a moment or two out of your life and send Wilma a birthday card. I'll leave my address at the end of the description in each of my videos. So just drop her a card, drop her a note. It doesn't have to be a card. Just send her handwritten. And she loves to read cards open cards. It just makes her day. My little five-year-old grandson said yesterday, oh, but she likes stuffed animals too, Mamma. I said, I know. But she's a little sweetheart, and I like to make her day a little special again this year. Okay, so that is done. Now we're going to transfer the meat back into the gravy. I sure wish I had a camera person, but I don't. I'm doing everything on my cell phone. Yeah, so you want to make sure it's all covered. And now what we're going to do is turn this down because we want this to simmer. Oh, yeah. At this point in time, we are going to put these onions back in. Now, I did not use a lot of onions, and I'll tell you why. My grandsons don't like them. And they will sit and pick them out. Or they'll frown. And they will frown at this. But they've already been out wanting to know what I'm cooking. They smell this back there. Yeah, so let's turn this down to low. And we are going to let this cook for about 45 minutes. And we're going to cover this up. Whoop, got the wrong lid. Happens every time. Go and behold. Don't know what I did with my lid. There it is. So we're going to put this, a lid on it. 45 minutes. Until it's done. And I will bring you back when it's about done. And I'll show you the uh, potatoes, mashed potatoes. I'm sure you all know how to do mashed potatoes. But I'll plate this up and show you what we're having for dinner tonight. So see you here in a bit. Okay, everyone, our cube steak is done. Mashed potatoes are done and so are the green beans. So now what we're gonna do is dish this up. I just wish you could see it 
in the pan. Let me see if I can not bring it to you. I don't know. Just look at that. Smells so good. Let me get a plate. We're going to plate this up for you. Oh my goodness, I can't wait. I'm starved to death. Oh my goodness. You could cut that with a fork. Look at that. Now we're going to dip up some mashed potatoes. I would use a ice cream scooper. This is what we did when we had a restaurant. We didn't serve it like that. And then I'm gonna put some gravy. That's why I like a lot of gravy. Just put it on there like that. Let's dip up some of these green beans. You'll see what I'm talking about when it comes to these green beans. These canned green beans. Oh. Look at that. Doesn't get any better than that. So, I'm going to move you over here. And we'll give this a taste test. Okay, I've got you over to my counter. Now, this is, look at that. I think this has been one of the hardest videos for me to do because I was doing the cube steak, mashed potatoes, the green beans, and not having a, a video person, it was just hard for me. But it's done. I'm starved. I'm going to give this a taste test. And you can cut this with your... fork. Oh my goodness. So good. It's hot. And oh, so good. And you don't have to put any kind of browning in your gravy. Because how I showed you to do this the drippings and everything from the skillet, that is what makes your gravy brown. Oh, I wish you could just reach through my cell phone and get you a bite of this. And I wish you can reach out through my cell phone and give me a tomato. That'd be really nice. The green beans. Gosh, they're so good. If you don't like a lot of ham, then back up on the ham. But this is good. Mmm. Mashed potatoes. So that's what I have for you today. And I still apologize. I'm still new to all this filming. And I'm too old to go back to school to learn how to edit and do all this stuff to make all my videos all so pretty, but this is country cooking. This is how we do it in the kitchen. That's the way it is. So I'm gonna sign off here and go get my grandkids so they can have some dinner. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up. Until the next time, I hope y'all have a wonderful and blessed day.